Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. So it's um, Sunday evening, it's vlog time. Right, Christmas coming up. So I did a quick YouTube short, um, just describing a few quick ideas if people are asking you, what would you like for Christmas? Um, and to be honest, a lot of stuff in woodworking can get quite costly. So I put forward three relatively cheap ideas. Um, I haven't got any sponsorship money for this and I'm not going to give you links. If you search this stuff, Google will find it for you. All right. Um, one of these was um, the brace um, driver bit adapter. Now, what's great about this is there are lots of stuff these days that has like a, a quarter inch shank on it and you can't put that in a brace. But with just that little adapter, you can use things. Now, obviously, you can't maybe get the same speed on a brace, but... It depends which size brace. You've got different sweeps on those, so the narrowing you get with these smaller ones, you can speed up a bit. And, you know, drill drivers, you know, they are basically landfill. Um, they are blooming useful, don't get me wrong, and probably most, a lot of homes do have them, but um, the batteries won't go flat on a brace until you're six foot under, so um, it's useful to think about. Um, yeah, that's not too expensive. The other one I highlighted was... Um, if you're getting into a bit of sharpening or you're new to it and you want to get a stone, Norton India, uh, just get the fine. Um, I have used a combination for a long time, but the um, coarse side on that one is, I think, Crystallon. And what happens with that is it just dishes out so quickly. Um, this red is, I believe, aluminium oxide. It's a lot harder wearing. And unless you're totally cack handed, you're going to take a long time to dish that out. Um, they're eight inches long, two inches wide and an inch thick. You're never going to wear it out. If you're a home woodworker, see you through, no problem. And even if you're thinking about where well, you might want to go to Waterstones, as long as you don't use this one with a mix or you don't start with oil, you can actually start with this with water. So it says in the instructions, make sure I just haven't dreamt that. Um, with yeah it says you can use genuine norton sharpening stone oil yeah or i just use baby oil and um you can also use water in place of oil so if you want to keep it as a water stone you could do that fill your boots do what you want and um the other thing was uh saw files and that will be useful when we get on to the next thing barco are pretty good they're nice and Got myself some fresh saw files here and they don't break the bank. And if someone said, oh, what would you like? All you need to do is, you don't have to know anything about saw files. Okay, you don't need to. If you go to any reputable tool seller and if they sell saw sharpening files, they'll have the descriptions of like double X slim and all the rest of it. I, I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. But if you click on the reputable tool um, companies will have a little listing saying this is suitable for this many teeth per inch so you just go to your saw measure it and like my tenon saw maybe say it's 14 you want one that fits with that range and you just order them in good value and infinitely useful and I'm not sure how much you can see from this but the old saw vice is pretty much there I've just uploaded a quick video of loading a butt hinge because I've been struggling to generate much meaningful content um, but yeah I was going to be staining that one dark, um, but what I found quite useful, as you can see there, I've got a lovely contrast on the teeth with the light timber. So what I'm going to do is hit that with some sanding sealer and try and keep it clean um, because the light in my garage isn't great. I've got no natural light and we're in the winter now anyway. So anytime I'm working, it's going to be dark. Um, so yeah, I haven't done a great deal, to be quite honest with you. And um, that's something I wanted to pick up on. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it in um, previous videos, but um, on my website I have got a portfolio put up and I think I've mentioned that stuff does take a long time to do if you're just doing it of an evening. And this is what's happened. I did have a run where I was um, being quite productive and then if you've got commitments, you can't do as much and that's completely fine. It's, um, it's not a problem. Um, I know I got caught out with that before in the past of trying to do too much and you could say now stop gassing and um, actually do something but I'm stuck at this point because 
family member's gone to bed. So if I start hitting and whacking and doing stuff like that, I'm kind of finished. And I don't want to put any um, coatings on this one yet because I want to add um, some soft material to the um, liners on that vice where it pinches the saw plate. And I've left that in a van at work, which wasn't very clever. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. Maybe next week that'll be ready to go. But um, it's just the way it goes. And I think if you're starting off woodworking and sometimes time's against you, just accept it. And my advice would be don't get too carried away with buying a shed load of tools. It's really quick to buy stuff. It's often a lot harder to find the time to use it. Um, so yeah, I would um, caution against buying too much if you're this Christmas looking to fill your boots with loads of woodworkery stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's much new apart from that. Um, I thought I might do a little bit of off-topic stuff. So if boom, that's where you want to leave it, just leave it there and, you know, we'll leave it there. Um, but yeah, it was just a couple of things really. I, um, as some of you around the world might know, uh, there is a football competition happening in the Middle East at the moment on the run-up to Christmas which, um, yeah, it's, it seems to be quite controversial. I'm not going to comment on things like that here. It's not really my place to, I don't think. But um, I don't know, it's been a real turn-off. Um, I've been a football fan for, I don't know, quite quite a long time. It's kind of, it's a bit of an institution in the UK. You, it's kind of around all the time. And it's such a simple game that even if you don't know what you're doing with it, if you're a kid, you can kick a ball and... You know, you can identify with some other person kicking a ball on the telly. Um, but even without the controversies of this particular World Cup, the fact that it's on the lead up to Christmas, I, I've had like um, pop-up ads coming on my um, computer screen where I saw one with a supermarket. And I swear, like your, your graphic designers, probably every year they probably wheel out, within reason, very similar templates and this year, you can tell that I think a few of them have been caught napping. Um, there was, um, there was like they tried to combine Christmas and the World Cup into this little pop-up banner that came up next to my emails or something. And you just think, wow, that just looks like um, the World Cup and a Christmas tree just drove into each other. Um, and then there's also the like the amount of gambling that's getting highlighted at the moment. And it's, uh, listen, I I don't want to ban stuff. I'm not interested in that. But there seems to be this thing at the minute where everybody is keen to use their name to, to promote anything. And that's not my business, really. I can kind of comment on it. And, you know, if they've got the reputation to promote what they want through their own hard work and profile and they can earn money, that's up to them. It's just, I, it makes me feel a bit sad when it's like you, you kind of looked up to these people a bit as, as certain people and you think now you're just cashing in on gambling sites and I know they say gamble responsibly, but I think really within reason gambling ads should probably be, you know, pushed away. I don't think we really need to see that too much. Um, I think people should be allowed to have a bet, you know, go to a casino, do what you want to do. We went to the beach today and went to an amusement arcade. You know, you go in there, you spend a little bit of money, have some fun. You know, I'm not insane about this stuff, but people get into some real dire situations with it. And it always used to be when I was younger, if you wanted to place a bet, you had to go into a shop. And I think there should be some some restriction on the gambling. So with me feeling a bit turned off by football, I've tried to wrap my head around American football. Um, I thought, can I follow another sport? And when I looked at that, I, I tend to look for, it's like, I'm not from Liverpool, but I support Everton. And a lot of the reason for that is because they're a very old club and there's a good history there. Obviously, with English sports, there's always a mix of history. There's a bit of bad in there too. But so I was having a look at the American football stuff and there are some teams that have been around a long time. But one thing I found interesting was that you get teams that, it's almost like a franchise, if that's the correct word, where you, they get moved around from different cities. So I was kind of, I don't know, I found that a little bit strange. I can't, I'd never imagine like um, a, you know, like your Manchester United's or 
you know, a mill wall or anywhere like West Ham. I can never imagine going, oh, do you know what? We're up sticks. We're, um, we're going to the Midlands. <laughs> it's just, it's so territorial here. I don't know whether that's different in the US, whether it's just more of a business model. But um, I'm trying to adopt the um, Detroit Lions, I think they're called. And I've tried to watch a couple of videos to understand the game. But I don't know how far I'm going to get with it. Um, there were, American football was put on in the UK during the 80s. And I did watch a bit of it then as a kid. But it was a bit confusing. So who knows, I might get into that or I might not. And um, okay, okay, Stanley, time to feed the dog. <laughs> yeah, you enjoy yeah. the music, yes? Yeah, it's all good. Thanks your dog food in my house, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Good night. Right, good night, see you in the morning. That's what I mean, I can't, um, can't go too far now because if I start making a racket, I'm going to get told off. Um, but yeah, so I might start following the American football, but today, um, after a day out, I, I had to cook the tea as well. And I did enjoy my main sport that I enjoy is, is motor racing and specifically motorcycles. And they had the last round of the World Superbikes um, this weekend down in Australia on Phillip Island. I, I love that stuff. It's great. Um, if, you, if you're into motorsport and you're a little bit bored with other forms of it, give it a look. Um, whether it's British Superbike is excellent. Um, MotoGP or World Superbike is great value for money. And I love the fact it's got that. They look very similar to MotoGP bikes, but you can, in theory, buy them from the shop. Obviously, <coughs> excuse me, what you buy and ride on the road is hugely modified. Um, it's, you know, it's a huge step up, but it's, it's that kind of nice correlation, you know, and it's nothing like touring cars, you know, um, touring cars, it's hellish impressive, but, you know, it's almost like you can nearly buy an F1 car for the road type vibe. And um, yeah, I always enjoy watching that. It's good. Um, so yeah, this week I'm going to plow on, try and get this um, saw vice done and um, yeah, get some finish put on it. Oh, and, and a quick um, quick thing I noticed, I, I have got an Instagram page, which I think is linked in this channel's description, um, not under each video. And I had something strange happen in that one. All of a sudden um, I had a lot of people... Um, following my Instagram page. It went from about um, 700, um, I think, to now maybe 1,100 very quickly in the space of a few days. I don't know why that is. Maybe there's been some change there. Um, there's nothing I can do with it. Um, <coughs> like I said, I don't want to start chasing people to say, hey, Evo stick, it's the best wood glue ever. Glue within reason is glue. Uh, you know it is what it is um and i like a lot of things which are quite stripped back there's um for instance when i got the um shopping on friday evening i go to a supermarket called little and it's very much a discount and a lot of supermarkets will take pride in saying that they'll price match aldi which is viewed as being above little no no one likes to even mention that they're going to little but that's that's where i go to get get good value shopping and I look, they don't do any celebrity endorsements and I absolutely love that and I'll put up a photo on Instagram and it made me laugh when I saw it they've got their billboards all set up and I swear they must have spent no money on the creative department it was just like ge generic posters of saying look this trolley of shopping costs like 100 quid from Tesco it costs 80 quid from Lidl or whatever and then there was another one that's a picture of some Christmas paraphernalia Another one was a teddy bear and he was stood up between two puddings and he had chocolate on his face. There was no movement like to suggest that he'd been doing anything. In many ways, he looked like a teddy with feces smeared on his face. Um, that, that made me laugh. I thought, fantastic. That's what I want. I don't want to be paying my supermarket to overly market food at me. Just take a picture of a teddy with what appears to be feces on his face and let me do my shopping. That's where I'm going to go. Um, so that's all I've got for you this week. And um, I think I might do one midweek if I can. I did a little um, short reel on table saws and table saw safety. Um, I saw another a video came up on my YouTube algorithm. And it was somebody, basically it looks like they're a salesperson. And they picked up on a video where someone was doing something unsafe. 
then they showed you these products and all the rest of it. And while there were some good points in that video, there was some that weren't discussed. And I'd like to pick up on that at some point. So yeah, have a um, great week and uh, good evening and we'll um, catch up soon.